Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions for short. So what is a redox reaction and how do they work? Well it says right here that a redox reaction or oxidation reduction reaction is a chemical reaction in which the transfer of electrons between elements in the reaction is the primary driving force and in an earlier video we talked about decomposition reactions and synthesis reactions and combustion reactions and single replacement reactions and double replacement reactions and all five of these types of chemical reactions are redox reactions reactions in which the transfer of electrons is the primary driving force so in an earlier video we spoke about synthesis and what those are going to look like we spoke about decomposition reactions and what those are going to look like like we spoke about single replacement and double replacement reactions and what those look like and we talked about combustion reactions as well and in this video we are going to take a closer look at these types of uh, chemical reactions or these redox reactions right here and see what's taking place on a microscopic level with the electrons as these elements start to react with one another in this chemical reaction right here or right here or in these other three types of redox reactions. So let's first talk about oxidation states of elements before we start looking microscopically at what happens to these electrons that are in these atoms in these types of chemical reactions. And so if we take a look at a periodic table of elements, this periodic table of elements will help us to determine the oxidation states of different elements and it says right here that the oxidation state of an element corresponds to the number of electrons that an atom either loses gains or appears to use when joining with other atoms in a compound and oftentimes these, these oxidation states of these elements can be determined by looking at the periodic table of elements and so an important thing to keep in mind is that all neutral atoms all neutral atoms or elements that are unbonded have an oxidation state equal to zero so if they're not in a compound well they're probably going to have an oxidation state equal to zero and so if we take a look at this periodic table of elements we can start to see that we can determine the oxidation states of the different elements based on their locations on the periodic table of elements for example all the elements in group one here these are going to have an oxidation state equal to positive one all the elements here in group two these are going to have an oxidation state equal to positive two if we take a look over here at group 17, all of these in group 17, they are going to have an oxidation state equal to negative 1. From oxygen down to tellurium, these are typically going to have oxy oxygen, um, I'm sorry, oxidation states equal to negative 2. And nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic are typically going to have oxidation states equal to negative 3. And so you'll start to learn some more of these as you go along, but these are some of the the typical oxidation states that you're going to use in a beginning uh, inorganic chemistry course. There's a, a few others that you should probably know. For example, aluminum has an oxidation state equal to plus three. Uh, zinc here has an oxidation state equal to positive two. And uh, silver right here has an oxidation state equal to positive one. So knowing this, knowing these oxidation states of these different elements, we can now start to figure out on a microscopic level in a chemical reaction which elements are being oxidized and which are being reduced but what is oxidation and what is reduction well let's take a look at what oxidation and reduction means and so it says that when atoms lose one or more electrons they are oxidized and when atoms gain one or more electrons they are reduced so a couple of simple mnemonic devices will help you to remember which is which. For example, let's take a look. Leo the lion goes grr. What does this mean? Leo the lion goes grr. Well, losing electrons is oxidation. That's where we get Leo from. And gaining electrons is reduction or grr. So if you remember Leo the lion goes grr, then you should be able to memorize that losing electrons is oxidation and gaining electrons is reduction. And here's another one for you, oil rig. Oil rig will also help you to memorize uh, which is which, what oxidation is and what reduction is. And so oil rig right here, oxidation is losing electrons. 
reduction is gaining electrons. And so if you remember these two little mnemonic devices, Leo the lion goes grr and oil rig, then you should be able to remember what is taking place with those electrons during oxidation and reduction. Uh, oxidation, it says right here, is losing electrons, right? Or losing electrons is oxidation and gaining electrons is reduction or oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. So let's apply this concept of uh, oxidation and reduction to several different chemical reactions and and let's learn how to determine which elements are being oxidized and which elements are being reduced and so in this first example it says in the following decomposition reaction below determine which element is being oxidized and which element is being reduced. So we have a chemical reaction right here. This appears to be the decomposition of water. And what we're trying to figure out here is which element is uh, losing electrons and which element is gaining electrons as this chemical reaction takes place. So if we take a look here at our chemical reaction, we have two moles of water decomposing into two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. And we need to figure out which of these elements is being oxidized and which of these elements is being reduced. So if we take a look right here at our periodic table of elements, we know that the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus one. So when typically when hydrogen is involved in a compound of some sort, it's gonna have a plus one charge. We know that oxygen, based on its location on the periodic table of elements, when it's in a compound, typically it's gonna have a negative two charge, or its oxidation state is gonna be negative two. If we take a look over here, we see hydrogen, hydrogen gas. This is elemental hydrogen, right? And so because it's an element, it's going to have no charge at all. And we have oxygen right here, which also is elemental oxygen and therefore has no charge at all. So if we take a look here, what must happen to this hydrogen right here that is in this water molecule that currently has a positive one oxidation to turn into a neutrally charged hydrogen over here? Well, what must happen is that this hydrogen that has a positive charge must gain an electron to become neutral over here. So if hydrogen is gaining one or more electrons, well, we would call that reduction, right? So hydrogen here is being reduced And let's take a look at oxygen. If we take a look right here on the left-hand side or the reactant side of our chemical equation, oxygen has an oxidation of negative two right here, right? Because it's in this compound. So what must this oxygen do in order to go from having a negative two oxidation to having uh, an oxidation equal to zero? Well, it's going to have to lose two electrons. If it loses these two electrons right here, it's going to have an oxidation that is equal to zero. So because oxygen here is losing uh, these electrons, we would say that oxygen is being oxidized. Right? If we remember oil rig, oxidation is losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons. So that's how we can determine in this chemical reaction which elements are losing and which elements are gaining electrons. Let's take a look at another example. In this second example it says in the following synthesis reaction below determine which element is being oxidized and which element is being reduced. So we have a chemical reaction right here where two moles of sodium is going to react with one mole of chlorine gas to produce two moles of sodium chloride. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this chemical reaction equation. We have two moles of sodium reacting with one mole of, uh, of Cl2 gas. And this is going to end up producing two moles of NaCl. And so if we take a look right here, we have elemental sodium. Elements have an oxidation equal to zero, right? And this is going to react 
with elemental chlorine, right? And so elemental chlorine is going to have an oxidation equal to zero. So these two things are going to react together and produce sodium chloride. And we know the oxidation state of sodium because it's right here on our periodic table coming from group one. So it forms a plus one oxidation. And we know if we take a look on our periodic table of elements that chlorine is right here on our periodic table of elements and so its oxidation state is negative one so what must happen here for sodium that is uh, that has a zero oxidation state what must happen to this to become a positive one over here a positive one oxidation well what's going to happen here is that sodium is going to have to lose a negative electron to become positive over here right and so because sodium is losing an electron to become positive over here on the product side, we would say that sodium is being oxidized. Remember that oxid, uh, oxidized or oxidation is losing uh, one or more electrons. And if we take a look, what's happening to our chlorine right here? Well, chlorine is neutral on the reactant side. And so what's going to have to happen in order for it to have a negative one charge over here on our product side? You guessed it. This chlorine here is going to have to gain an electron to go from zero to negative one over here. So our chlorine is being reduced and remember that reduction is gaining one or more electrons so that's how we can determine in this chemical reaction which element is being oxidized and which element is being reduced let's take a look at another example in this third example it says in the following single replacement reaction below determine which element is being oxidized and which element is being reduced so we have zinc metal reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride in solution and hydrogen gas and so if we rewrite this chemical reaction equation down below here we'll be able to figure out what's happening to each of these little atoms or elements that are involved in this chemical reaction and so here is our chemical reaction rewritten and so let's first take a look at the reactants over here on the left we have elemental zinc elemental zinc right we said that all elements have a uh, oxidation state that are equal to zero if we take a look at hydrogen right here hydrogen is involved in a compound or as part of a compound therefore its oxidation state will be plus one if we take a look right here at chlorine chlorine is also involved in a compound and so its oxidation state is negative one and so here are the starting oxidation states of these elements that are involved in this chemical reaction let's take a look now at the products if we take a look we have zinc that is in a compound and from earlier in the video we learned that zinc whenever it's involved in a compound or isn't a compound its oxidation state is plus two chlorine right we see right here it too is involved in this compound or a part of this compound and therefore its oxidation state is negative one and last we have elemental hydrogen right elemental hydrogen this is an element and therefore its oxidation is zero so now we have to determine which of these elements is being oxidized and which is being reduced well if we take a look right here we have zinc on our reactant side and its oxidation state is zero however over here it's a positive two so what must this zinc done in order to go from zero to having an oxidation state that is plus two well this zinc here must have lost uh, a couple of negative electrons right so zinc is being oxidized because it is losing one or more electrons so zinc is being oxidized let's take a look at what's happening to our hydrogen if we take a look over here hydrogen has a plus one oxidation state but on the product side it's zero so what must have happened for, uh, for this this hydrogen with a plus one oxidation state to go to a zero oxidation state this hydrogen here must have gained an electron right and because it's gained an electron 
we call that reduction. And so if we take a look, hydrogen is being reduced. Right, this hydrogen here is being reduced. It is gaining an electron as it goes from a plus one oxidation state to a zero oxidation state over here. And last, let's take a look at our chlorine. If we take a look at our chlorine here, the chlorine on the uh, reactant side here has an oxidation state equal to minus one. And if we take a look over here on the product side, it too has an oxi oxidation state of minus one. So there's nothing happening, right? There's nothing happening. Oxidation or reduction is not taking place to chlorine. It's staying the same. The oxidation state is staying the same. So for chlorine, you might say that neither oxidation or reduction for our chlorine. Okay, so that's what's taking place in this chemical reaction. Let's take a look at one final example. In this last example it says in the following double replacement reaction below determine which element is being oxidized and which element is being reduced. So if we rewrite this chemical reaction equation down below here we have one mole of sodium sulfide reacting with two moles of hydrochloric acid and this is going to end up producing two moles of NaCl and one mole of H2S. And so what we have to do is determine which of these elements over here is being oxidized and which is being reduced. So if we take a look here, we have sodium and sodium is in a compound. And so we know that when sodium is in a compound, its oxidation number or state is plus one. If we take a look at sulfur over here or sulfide, if we take a look when it's in a compound, its oxidation state is negative two. If we take a look at hydrogen, hydrogen is right here. And when it's in a compound, its oxidation state is plus one. If we take a look at chlorine over here, when it's in a compound, it will also have a charge of negative, or it will have a charge of negative one. So if we take a look on our product side, we have sodium in a compound right here. It forms an oxidation state or has an oxidation state of plus one. Chlorine has an oxidation state of negative one. Hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one and sulfur has an oxidation state of negative two. And so if we're taking a look and we're comparing these elements on the reactant side to the elements over here on the product side, we can see that sodium has an oxidation state of plus one here and plus one over here. We can see that sulfur has an oxidation state of negative two on the reactant side and negative two on the product side. So there's no change there as well. If we take a look at hydrogen on the reactant side, its oxidation state is plus one. It's also plus one on the product side. And last but not least, if we take a look at chlorine right here, its oxidation state on our reactant side is negative one, and it too has an oxidation state of negative one on our product side. And so what's happening here? Does a redox reaction take place here? Remember, redox reactions occur when electrons are transferred between one another between the atoms, right? Between the atoms in this chemical reaction. So does a redox reaction occur right here? Well, if we take a look based on our oxidation states of our reactants compared to our products, no redox reaction. Takes place here. None of these atoms over here are being oxidized or reduced. So understand that concept. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.